Uh, my name is Glenn Kiefer. I'm one of three partners at Sophia Steak Lake Forest. I thought it might be worthwhile to kind of tell a little story about who we are and what kind of experience we have so maybe it can help put you at ease of what kind of operators we are. So we opened, we met Sophia. Our opening day was Friday the 13th, March 20th, the day they closed down the uh, state of Illinois. Um, when I opened our restaurant in Chicago, Kiefer's, it was two weeks after 9-11. And when we opened up our restaurant opposite uh, Millennium Park, it was right in the middle of the recession. So you may want to short the market. <laughs> but here is, this is our, our team, Ryan and Anna O'Donnell, who met at our restaurant at Kiefer's back in the uh, mid-2000s. So this is John Ferrer and Brianne, who's right here with us today. Uh, that's our group of, of management. Myself, Doug Saltis, who used to be the P&RPM, he's operates our Andros Taverna down in Logan Square. Carrie and Sarah Wood are partners with us at Pomeroy. These are our other partners down in the city. Billy Lawless, who's got a great spot on Michigan Avenue. These are our se uh, six, we have six going on, well, we got seven now. We just opened up Buck Russell's, a sandwich shop in Wilmette. So that's the look of the restaurant. It's, you know, understated. We do have uh, outdoor seating at Sophia and Wilmette. It's kind of a clubby interior. We expect the application to be very much the same here. We have 20 tables. Our neighbors were very kind to let us put our tables out in front of their businesses during COVID when we were shut down and we weren't able to really operate much inside. So we made it thanks to our neighbors. And, and I think that's part of what we want to talk about here tonight is that we got great steaks, but we also have a nice burger, which we'll do the same here. During COVID, we had the opportunity to put a tent up in our parking lot, and we had neighbors that lived right behind us in a condo building, and we had a meeting somewhat like this, although it was virtual. And it was a downtown business district, and the, the commission there, the planning commission said, you know, you can go ahead and put a tent up, and our neighbors were so strongly opposed to it, we decided not to put the tent up. It was right behind our building on our parking lot, Sure, some of it was the fact we didn't think tents are all that healthy during COVID, but we also want you to know that first thing we want to be is a good neighbor. We also have a business to run. So I think the three things that have come up that seem to be recurring are parking, employee parking, and how we're going to control that. Just like any other work rule that we have at our restaurants, we'll write that into our handbook. And if we find that people are violating that rule, it's a work rule like any other. We'll do coaching councils, and if necessary, we'll terminate employees that don't follow the rules. We know that street parking is not something that our employees should be doing, and we'll more than likely, I would say 99%, have valet because it seems to remedy a couple of things at the same time. It keeps, keeps us in control of the parking so we can go down to the parking lot behind the, tra uh, behind the train tracks on, what is that, McKinley? Thank you. So I think valet will be really important. Um, we'll control the way our, th that you know our employees where they're parking. We understand that we don't want them parking on public streets. Uh, the second thing that ca came up quite a bit was, I think Dick brought this up about odor. We don't have char broilers. We have a, a steak broiler, which is a completely different animal. It doesn't create, it's not hard fuel. And I think that you'll find that the kind of smoke emitted from there or odors are there are much le easy, more easily tolerable. We're not without some. It is a restaurant. It's a business, and it's going to be a busy restaurant, we hope. And the, the third one seems to be the noise factor. We got this last set of proposed conditions for approval. First one is amplified music. And i got to tell you, I've been in this business since 1969. I started as a busboy when I was 14 in Amityville, New York. And when you walk into a restaurant, if it sounds like this, it's kind of hard to get people interested. So I understand that there's a, a rule about this, but we would really appreciate the opportunity to put some light music out there, never live music, and off by nine o'clock. But our pro forma is that w we use that patio and we're happy to be done by 10.30, it says here, Sunday through Thursday, no problem. 11.30 <coughs> on Friday and Saturday, no problem. To be honest with you, the earlier the better for me. I'm too old to hang in doing this anymore. We know that not much good happens after midnight. So those seem to be the, the, the things that, were, that came up most often. 
what else should I be talking about to make you feel comfortable? 